Good morning. Good morning. It is Wednesday, April 14th, 2021, and two buffleheads just flew by. And you're like, what's a bufflehead? I'm like, it's a type of duck. Uh, did I mention I'm taking up duck, duck watching, bird watching this year? I'm going to be a little bit more um, aware of the birds around me. And it's just, you know, something else to do when you're outside, right? Because that's why I encourage you to do every day. Let's go outside. Uh, good morning, Greg, and good morning, Ellen, and good morning, Leanne. And so I hope you were able to get outside yesterday. It was a beautiful day. Good morning, Susanna. And good morning, Paul and Sue. So glad to have you here. Good morning, Al. So it's a wee bit foggy out this morning, as you can tell. Let me, <laughs> let me do the pano for you. Look at that. It's a little foggy, right? Look how dark that got. So, uh, good morning, Mike, and good morning, Rob. Uh, yep, so I thought I better stay close to shore this morning so I don't get myself lost. So, in the process of staying close to shore, there was a Canada goose, like, four feet, and it started hissing at me. And I was like, because I'm thinking, why is it not moving away from me? I'm like that was crazy I must admit that was a wee bit crazy and I'm it did get my heart racing because Canada geese can be like vicious and I would prefer not to have that story well as long as it didn't hurt me right um so anyhow so here I am Kempenfelt Bay and it's just in a little cove did you see I don't know if you can see the lighthouse oh yep kind of there it is there's the lighthouse right there so anyhow uh here we are Kempenfeld bay on uh, wednesday morning and i hope you have your bible and beverage of choice whether it's tea or coffee or milk or juice uh so and <laughs> yeah mm -hmm. something warm first thing in the morning is always nice so yesterday uh, yesterday I was telling you that I have decided to just sort of uh, <laughs> stroll through the book of Colossians. I don't even know if I want to say stroll because I, I think it's slower than a stroll because I'm still word number one. Can somebody uh, tell me <laughs> a seagull just dodged me. Um, can somebody tell me about the one word that we looked at yesterday? One word. What was the one word that we looked at yesterday? Yep, that's my question. So to start us off, nice easy one. What was the first word that, uh, well, the first word, the only word that we really looked at yesterday? Can someone let me know? I'm gonna have another. Oh, Brenda's already jumped in. Yes, yes. So we looked at the first word of Colossians. And so uh, before we go any further, we're gonna pray. And then we're going to jump in. So, dear Lord Jesus, I ask that you would uh, thank you for everyone who's joined in uh, fresh this morning. And thank you for everyone who's going to come fresh a little bit later. And Lord, we ask that you uh, bless your word this morning. Help us to hear what you want us to hear. Would you open our hearts, open your word to us through the power of your Holy Spirit. Amen. All right. That's all right. I have a plastic boat. Okay, so Colossians 1, 1 begins with Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, or Christ Jesus, by the will of God, right? And so we talked about Paul yesterday, and uh, Seagull just scooped. This is a problem with me being outside. Seagull just scooped up a minnow. Um, we talked about Paul yesterday. And, and what we knew about Paul and sharing our story. So I hope you had a, a chance to share your story yesterday um, or to think about your story, right? To think about what is God currently doing in your life? How has he made a change in your life? Um, so today, um, I must confess, Paul again today. I got stopped on Paul again. Like <laughs> at some point, I'm going to get a little bit further. Uh, my personal Devo is still in verse 1 chapter 2 b um so anyways uh, abby actually sent me an article uh, because there's a misconception that i want to talk about paul and so here's a question can anybody tell me um when the bible tells us that, or, or how the 
when Paul changes his name, right? Because it was Saul and Paul. So when does he change his name? All right, I want you to think about that. When does Paul change his name? And this is really important, right? And uh, I never really had much use for word for word study, but this is really coming alive for me and making like, wow, just, I needed a new freshness, right? And, and there are days when we all need a new freshness. So, um, okay, Brenda says on the Damascus road, his name changed, any other ideas? Any other ideas? Any other ideas of when Paul's name changed or Saul's name changed? It does look like a wee bit like a horror movie before me. Ah, uh, good morning, Ray. So glad that you've joined us. And Joyce, after the conversion in the Book of Acts, right? When God said so is a great answer. Um, so. I did some research on this and Abby actually sent me an article and, and I had, I had known this, but it was really good to know that somebody else agreed with me. Um, so we're going to go to, uh, the book of Acts chapter 13 and, uh, we're going to put my glasses on so I can read when he met with the disciples. Great idea, Beth. Yeah, or when he started his ministry. Okay, you got your cheaters on? I got mine on. Here we go. Okay, so on the road to Damascus, Jesus said, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? That was chapter 9 of Acts. So we're jumping ahead. Chapter 13, it says, In the church of Antioch there were prophets and teachers, Barnabas, Simeon, called Niger, Lucius of Cyrene, Manian, who had been brought up with Herod the Tetrarch, and Saul, while they were worshiping the Lord and fasting, the Holy Spirit said, set apart to me Barnabas and Saul. So chapter 13, so the Damascus Road started, well, the experience was chapter 9. So here we are, chapter 13, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, five chapters later, the Holy Spirit is calling him Saul. All right, so Jesus continues to call him Saul, Road of Damascus, chapter 9. Holy Spirit calling him Saul, chapter 13. Uh, so set apart uh, Barnabas and Saul for the work that I have, I've, I have called them. Uh, so after that, they fasted and, fasted and prayed and placed their hands on them and set them off. So, okay, still Saul. All right, verse 4. The two of them, Paul and Barnabas, or Saul and Barnabas, set off. Um, on their way by the Holy Spirit, went down to Seleucia and sailed from there to Cyprus. Uh, when they arrived at Salamis, they proclaimed the word of God to the Jewish synagogues. John was with them as their helper. They traveled through the whole island until they came to Paphos. Um, there they met a Jewish sorcerer, a false prophet named Bar-Jesus, who uh, uh, was an attendant of the proconsul Sergius Paulus. The proconsul, an intelligent man, sent for Barnabas and Saul and because he wanted to hear the word of God. But Elymas, the sorcerer, for that is what his name means, uh, opposed them and tried to turn the proconsul from the faith. Then Saul, who was also called Paul. There you have it. Verse 9, chapter 13. Luke, the author of the book of Acts, puts this in. Because, now here's a question. Uh, here is a question, because from then on, he's no longer known as Saul, he's known as Paul. So why, why would, so before they're sent off, he's known as Saul. And then why do you think Luke would, at this point in the story, say Saul, who is also named Paul? Because it goes down, verse 13 says, from Paphos, because you're like, well, what's the rest of the story? I'll let you read it. Um, from Paphos, Paphos, Paul and his companion sailed to Perga in Pamphylia. Okay, so the question is, the question is, why do you think Luke would um, put that line in, Saul, who is also called Paul? That's the question I want you to think about. Why do you think Luke, the apostle, so it wasn't, wasn't Jesus, who changed his name on the Damascus Road, which lots of people, there's been preachers who've 
who preach sermons like that, I might have even fell into that too, you know. On the Damascus Road, Saul became, um, you know, went from Saul the persecutor to Paul the preacher, right? No. So uh, Jesus continued to call him Saul. The Holy Spirit continued to call him Saul. So why would Luke, why would Luke, Saul, who is also known as Paul? So uh, one of the options is Saul needs a new identity. Okay, any other thoughts? I know some of you are, <laughs> some of you are talking a lot at home because uh, he's a disciple. Okay, uh, any other any other thoughts? Any other thoughts? Mm-hmm. Good morning, good morning, Fashion and Louise. I'm gonna push away a little bit from the edge. There we go. Any other thoughts about why there's a mallard duck pair over there? I know. I don't want to give it away too soon. Uh, Saul was known as a persecutor. Paul was unknown. He was ministering to the Gentiles, so he used his Greek name to identify with him. Was reborn. Look at all these great answers. Possibly a mispronunciation. I love all of these answers because he was sent by the Holy Spirit. So let me share with you my guess, okay? Uh, my thoughts. So my thoughts are this, um, and with a little bit of research, right? So... Uh, so people would look at his present and not at his past. Look at all these great answers. These are all wonderful answers. Um, I think Luke tells us this story, says it, Saul, also known as Paul, for um, one, it was always his name. Uh, it is, and we even read it in the beginning of chapter 13 of how, um, all right, let me just pick that up again. Acts 13, it says... Um, uh, Simeon, also called Niger, right? It's very common for uh, Hebrew people to have Greek names as well. And remember, uh, Paul, even though he was born a Jew, had Roman citizenship. So it was quite normal for people to have two names, right? Uh, Tabitha and Dorcas, right? Same woman, two names, one Greek name, one Hebrew name. And so it's very, very common there's a cacophony of birds out today. Um, very common for people to have two names, right? One Jewish, one Greek. And so part of me wants to say that while he was ministering to the Jews, he was Saul. Because that was his Hebrew name. He was very proud of his Hebrew name. He had no problem being a Jew, right? Um, and yet, being a Jew to Greek people to Roman people, not so friendly and welcoming. So he used his Greek name, Paul. And he says this in chapter, um, in 2 Corinthians 9. So let me just, if you want to have your paper Bibles, you can flip over to 2 Corinthians 9. And uh, it says... Let me just make sure. Second Corinthians, First Corinthians nine. I'm like, I'm looking there, but it's not there. Uh, I actually wrote notes today. I know, aren't you impressed? I'm impressed. All right. It says Second Corinthians nine. Um, though I, oh, so this is nine nineteen. It says, though I am free and belong to no man, I make myself a slave to everyone to win as many as possible. To the Jews, I became like a Jew to win the Jews. And to those who are under the law, I became like one under the law, though I myself am not under the law, so that so as to win those under the law. To those not having the law, I became like one not having the law, though I am not free from God's law, but, to, but am under Christ's law, so as to win those not having the law. To the weak, I became weak, to win the weak. I've become all things to all men so that by all possible means I might save some. And I just, I love that idea that Paul chose to use a different name in order that people would be more open to hearing the gospel. I'm going to say that one more time. Paul was willing to use a different name so that people would be more open to hearing the gospel. 
And the reason it really got me thinking, because it, it asked me the question, what would I be willing to change in order that people could still hear the gospel and grow in their faith? Would I be willing to get up every morning at 7 o'clock and tell people how much God loves them? Um, would I be willing to sacrifice finances? A friend of mine told me that, that uh, they feel very passionately about a ministry, and so God is calling them um, to give you know, to sacrifice, sacrifice. And this is so often, you know, we think, well, I'm going to give, so I'm going to divert my, my tithes from my church to something else. And I'm like, uh, well, really, it's not a sacrifice then, is it? No, a sacrifice is above and beyond what you're normally giving. And he said, it's going to take a hit to our family, but we just really feel that God has a mission in this country and we want to support it. Um, are we willing to listen to music that we don't want to listen to? For the purpose of bringing other people to Jesus. Right? Like, are we willing? Are we will? Like, what are we willing to do so that people can hear about Jesus? Are we willing to spend a little bit more on groceries so that we can make a bigger meal and take it to our neighbor? Are we willing to get to know our neighbor next door who looks a little bit differently than us or sounds a little bit differently than us? Are we willing to actually learn how to pronounce their name properly? Are we willing to learn about their culture? Are we willing to invite them over for supper? I know COVID makes it very difficult, um, but barbecues are possible. <laughs> you know, what are we willing to do? I remember watching, um, I was at my cousin Trevor's and, and his kids were really small at that point, And I watched my mom get down on the floor to play with the kids. And that was not my mom's normal, but I knew she want, they wanted her to get down so she chose to do something that was very uncomfortable for her because that just wasn't in her in her wheelhouse to do that. And she got down on the floor and she played with those kids and what a wonderful time they had. And and that stands out to me to like, what are we willing to do so that people will come to know Jesus? And it's not that we give up, you know, what we believe or we sin, right? It's not that. But maybe there's some judgments or some just ways that we do things. Um, or maybe it's some preconceived ideas. Um, a friend of mine, he's a pastor at a rural church. And in order to reach his people, he had to learn how to go out and milk cows. He had to go out and weed gardens. He wasn't a farmer. But that's what he had to learn how to do. And and I realize not all of us are, are pastors and priests. Um, but we're all called to tell people about Jesus. So, like, what are we willing to change? What are we willing to do? What are we willing to give up? Like, are we willing to forgive someone? Setting an example to other people. Are we willing to get rid of the bitterness in our heart? Are we willing to befriend somebody that nobody else wants to befriend? Um, like, what are we willing to do? Paul was willing to change his name. He was also willing to do a whole lot more. We know this. The name change was just the, the in, right? It was just the in. But that, I, I asked the staff that yesterday, and, and uh, our staff, our, our, our office admin told me in the middle of the afternoon, she's like, I'm still thinking about that. Like, what am I willing to give up? What am I willing to change in order that people would come to know Jesus and so I want to encourage us to hold on to that today, to consider. So yesterday, I wanted you to think about your story, how Jesus had changed your life, the difference he was making. And today, I want you to think about what are you willing to change? What are you willing to give up? What are you willing to sacrifice in order that, that someone might come to know Jesus? Paul says, I've become all things to all people so that some might be saved. All right? Let's pray. Oh, Lord Jesus, you are so good. You are so good. And Paul was willing to give up everything so that people could come to know you. And Lord, I just question, uh, I just question what are we willing to give up so that people might know you? Are we willing to give up, you know, um, our safety, our security? Are we willing to, to put ourselves out there, maybe learn a new language or, or become friends with someone? Are we willing to give up unforgiveness and bitterness in our heart? And so, Father God, I ask today that you would speak to our spirits. And Lord, that where you are sort of poking us, nudging us, squeezing us, loving us in your kindness, would you woo us to the place you want us to be? Would you help us to be 
cheerful and whatever it is that you would help have us to give up in order that someone would come to know you and experience eternal life. We pray this in your name. Amen. All right, my dear friends, that's it. That's all. I hope you have a great, great day. Make sure you go outside, like, and share. Bye.